Yo, the I Am Rap Point Stereo Podcast, we're going live, okay? Me and G Moody, the tour continues May 9th, we're at the chapel in San Francisco, May 11th, we're in Seattle, and May 13th, we are in Vancouver, British Columbia. The show is going live. G, G, how are you feeling about the live shows? Man, I am anxious, I'm ready to go. Yo, I love that. I love the stage stuff, man. I like interacting with the fans. It's dope. Yo, if you want to come see us in San Fran, Seattle, or in Vancouver, tickets are available at www.iamrappaporttour.com. The young shooter, Dean Collins, will be joining us in San Fran. Maybe if he acts right, we'll bring him to Seattle. I don't know. He might drive everybody nuts. That's my man, 50 Grand. Always washes up with his dick in his hands. Go to www.iamrappaporttour.com to see us live starting May 9th in San Fran at the Chapel. All right. This is the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast coming live and direct from the gloom tomb. My name is Michael Rappaport. Uh, That's why they call the podcast the uh, Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. I guess I should probably... You think I should say this is Michael Rappaport, G? Uh, nah. Everybody know you now, man. You good. You good money now, bro. Oh, thank you. Uh, but I feel like I should introduce myself. You should never assume everybody knows me. But yeah. we'll figure that out later. Until we figure that out. <clears throat> my name is Michael Rappaport. Uh, also known as the Gringo Mandingo. Also known as White Mike. That's a fact. Um, also known as Bird, white folks. Um, but I'm most infamous for being known as the Gringo Mendingo now. A nickname that was earned, not given. Earned. I earned that fucking name, the Gringo Mandingo. Uh, I'm with G Moody. Uh, the last name rhymes with duty. He That's is the 2015-2016 podcast co-host of the year. Uh, uh, yes. An award that was earned. Yes, not given. Look it up. Yeah. This is uh, the Iron Rap Poor Stereo Podcast. We are known as the Disco 2, the Malachi Brothers. Um, <laughs> we've been podcasting off air since 1982. And let's get into it. Um, I want to start the show, G, just to jump right in. All right. Charlie Murphy, uh, the very unique, very funny, very nice Charlie Murphy, actor, comedian, obviously brother of Eddie Murphy. Um, passed away this week, um, and this is a guy that I, I I knew. I didn't know him very well, but I spent good time. I hung out with him. I actually met Charlie uh, when I was doing a movie with Eddie Murphy called Metro, and I know you and me, G, we, we, we loved him since uh, he was in Jungle um, Fever, and he was in yes. Mo Better Blues, Spike Lee joints. Those might have been the first yeah. movies he was in. Love Charlie Murphy, man. I could listen to that guy talk all day. <laughs> yeah, he the way he said things, he said it so hard, and he had such great yeah. timing. And, you know, he passed away this week. He was probably most well-known for the Chappelle Show skits, the, the Rick James skits, and yeah. all the comings and goings and the stories with Rick James. Uh, I'm Rick James, bitch, and the fighting Rick James and slapping Rick James and playing ball with Rick James. And, you know, I wanted to Flash. make sure we, 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 we took a minute to, 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 to give him uh, the love and the respect that he deserved. And, and again, I'm just going to say, you know, the time I spent with just a nice dude, like his disposition on screen, he seemed like he was like tough and sort of, yeah. you know, sort of like mean. Right. Such a nice dude. Nice to everybody. Yeah, o- right. Always was nice to everybody. And, and I think one of the reasons why he didn't, you know, sort of have as much success as he probably uh, deserved is because he looked just like his brother, Eddie Murphy. Those are, those are shoes to fill. It's almost like what the, it almost, almost like fraternal twins. Like they look exactly right. the like, like identical twins. Yes. Um, but yeah. but the talent was immense and, and, and he, he carved out a, a really, really great name for himself and a reputation for himself. I wanted to tell you this story. So when I was doing Metro with Eddie Murphy, um, I, I haven't talked about this much, but, but when I was growing up, when Eddie Murphy was uh, popping off, I don't know if it was like 82, 83, maybe 81, 82, when he first started on Saturday Night Live. We don't fact check here at the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast, but when Eddie was 
really like popping off on Saturday Night Live. I mean, I was so young that sometimes I would fall asleep before the show came on. Right. Like staying up to 1130, like for whatever, nine, 11, 12 year old was like, you know, you, you didn't always do it. You'd fall asleep early, especially because as G can attest, we were the type of kids. We weren't on video games. We weren't playing with a phone. We, we were out on a Saturday and a Sunday playing something all day, every day. Yeah. Yeah. Hoops. Hooping. I was playing football. I mean, anything. But we're hanging anything. out, walking around, playing in the park, anything. It was no. So yes. when so when Saturday evening came, you were tired. Stick ball, punch ball, all kind of shit. Manhunt, ring alivio. We was doing everything back in the days, man. Yeah, you had no other choice because your parents didn't want yeah. you around. And, and that's what you did to, to, to socialize. Yeah. That being said, I was in love with Eddie Murphy. No, Bruno. I, I, I loved him, like like the rest of the world. But, I mean, I fucking loved Eddie Murphy. Like, I, he's one of the reasons why I, I, I wanted to be an actor. Like, I, I, he, I, he inspired the shit out of me before right. I even wanted to be an actor. But then when he came out with uh, uh, Delirious, and then he started making the movies and 48 Hours and Training Places, I mean, this guy yeah. was, was everything to me. You, you remember I had that little calendar that you get from... Um, Amusement parks, G. I still have a picture. Yeah, I remember. And what did it I say on it? Uh, the next Eddie Murphy. Yep, I had a say. picture of it, yeah. and I had put, you know, you could put a little thing on it, like your name or your, your tagline. I put the next Eddie Murphy. This is when I had decided to be an actor. It's like 89. Yeah. I got it in Virginia. I was down there in Norfolk. I mean, he, he inspired me crazy. So when I finally got a chance to work with him on this film called Metro, I was in heaven. Okay, right. and I got to meet Charlie, and I met Eddie, of course, and I'm working with him, and 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 this is tying to to Charlie and the Rick James story. So I'm working with Eddie Murphy literally every single day. I'm like fucking bugging the fuck out. I'm bugging. Right. I've already been acting for for a good amount of years. I've worked with. I just came off of Copland, and um, a bunch of stuff, you know. But but I had just right. finished Copland, and Eddie Murphy was such a big fan of De Niro. He was asking me all these questions about. De Niro and what's he like as if you know he was a fan and we would go back and forth and me and Eddie Murphy would do lines from Raging Bull he loved Raging Bull as much as I did and we would just throw lines at each other all day the movie was a disappointment the movie was 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 whack I mean I, I right. think it's a really disappointing movie it was a real disappointment to me because you know like the banter and the, the, the kind of shit talking that you, you hear me doing here we were trying to do that the director just was trying to do some other shit. He thought he was making Seven with Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman. Oh. He's bugging. Oh. He really was referencing Seven. I'm like, yo, let me and Eddie live, man. We freaking off. That's beside the point. <laughs> so I remember one day we were in a car scene, and, and somehow we, we, we got around to talking about Prince at the time. This is like 95, 96. I don't remember when we did it. 95, 96, maybe, maybe 97. Right. And, and maybe a Prince, a Prince song came on in the car. And, and, and um, you know, Eddie loved music, so he's, like, dance, talking to the song. He's like, yo, he's a genius or something like that. And I ask him, did you ever meet Prince? And he's like, fuck yeah, I met Prince. You know, I hang out with him and all that shit. I'm like, oh, shit. And then, you know, yeah. I'm just, he's like, and I'm like, I'm like asking him if he ever met Prince as if he's like a schmo like me who, you know, who's like on the fringes, <laughs> Eddie Murphy. So Eddie, Eddie saw me, yo, and he could play ball. And I'm like, word. He's like, I was like, basketball is like, yeah, yo, Prince has got game. Prince is nice. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Prince and is and nice. I told you that this story crazy. before. And, and, yeah. and, um, he's like, no, I'm telling you, man. He goes, yo, we went out to his house. We were in Minnesota and it was me, Charlie. He always said Charlie. He never said Charlie. <laughs> Eddie called his brother Charlie. He said it was Charlie. me, Charlie, and it was, you know, this one and that one. And we got to his crib, and he was like, yo, we're going to play ball. And he said, you know, Charlie was like, man, get the fuck out of here. You know how he talked that New York, <laughs> get the fuck out. Y'all can't play ball. And Charlie yeah. uh, uh, was like, yo, we, can, we go ahead. We're going we gonna to play. And Prince was like, yo, I'm ready. And then Charlie said, fuck, we're going to play. Shirts first, blouses. And Eddie wow. told me that story. So when Dave Damn. Chappelle hooked up with Charlie Murphy and they were doing the Chappelle so show and Charlie Murphy was telling his true Hollywood stories, I had already heard the story from Eddie Murphy's mouth. And when Charlie was telling that story on the Dave Chappelle show, I knew the punchline because Eddie had already told me about it. And, you know, it, I, it was just Damn. something I never, I never forgot because it was, I was hearing Eddie Murphy talk about Prince and playing ball with Prince with his brother Charlie 
And, uh, you know, that's my little uh, Charlie Murphy story. So I wanted to just make sure that we, we, we shouted him out and, you know. Oh, absolutely, and, man. Yeah, it's a shame. Young dude, 57 yeah. years old. Um, it's I Am Rap Poor Stereo Podcast. We're going to listen to a little funk, and we're going to be right back. The I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast is sponsored by Casper Mattress, an obsessively engineered mattress at a shockingly fair price. You could try a Casper mattress for 100 nights risk-free in your home. If you do not love it, they will pick it up and refund you everything. With over 20,000 reviews online and an average of 4.8 stars, Casper is quickly becoming the Internet's most popular mattress. They have sheets, they have pillows, they even have doggy beds. Go to Casper.com, save $50 towards any mattress purchased by visiting www.casper.com forward slash Rappaport. Use the promo code Rappaport. Try a Casper mattress 100 nights risk-free in your home. If you don't love it, they will pick it up and refund you everything. Go to www.casper.com forward slash Rappaport. All right, this is the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. G Moody, last name rhymes with duty. Um, yep, I'm here. Yeah, I know. I know you're here. Um, <laughs> where, where, where do you want to start, G? Let's start with uh, Tony Romo being paraded around as if he won 10 Super Bowls. Tony Romo being paraded around as if he found the cure for fucking cancer. Yeah. Well, what, what is going on in Dallas? Tony Romo... He, he ain't no superhero. He ain't Aquaman. He ain't Superman. He wasn't even Troy Aikman. Ha! This dude was, he was a good quarterback. But he wasn't Brett Favre or Tom Brady. He wasn't even Roger Staubach. He's not even Eli Manning. I don't know what the big, the big shenanigans are over Tony Romo. Yo, he had a good career. Unfortunately, the injuries caught up with him. And that's it. 14 years as an NFL quarterback. That's a that's a blessing. You know, that's a blessing. Like, yeah. your, your time is over. The guy had broken backs and kept coming I mean, back, broken backs and serious injuries. And then they got, they're parading him around like he was that dude. He was not that dude. Never. Yo, never. The guy is known. He's notorious for um, choking in the big moments. So how is he able to get paraded around as if he he won mad playoff games? He got him to the yo. This dude don't deserve that. Like some some pulp mobile type shit where he just now nah, he on the Dallas Mavericks. And yo. you 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 on the Dallas Mavericks and they're like, well, he was a good guy. I'm a good fucking guy. I don't see the Knicks suit me up in the last uh, meaningless game and in, in, in down here against the Sixers. I'm a good fucking guy. I'm on the public front lines taking hits every day for the Knicks. This is professional and, basketball. Mark Cuban, you are bugging, my man. You're bugging. And you, you made and you made a documentary about the Knicks, and they still don't have no have you suit up. Gerald Moody, as God is my witness, I have actual fucking dreams. And I'm not talking about daydreams. I'm talking about dreams while you're sleeping at 47 years old that I still get a chance to play for the Knicks. I never got offered to be on the layup line and to do all that fly shit. They never give me any fucking uniforms. Yeah, yeah. They don't give me shit. And Tony Romo, he's he's signed for the Mavericks for one day, and he wants to get in, and they're they're yucking it up, and they're hooting and hollering. Yo, Brett Favre, Tom Brady, the great quarterbacks, you, 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 at certain points in the game, Dan Marino, these dudes, Joe Montana, you would wait for them to lead their team and catch up. With Tony Romo, you would wait for him to lead his team and fuck up. It happened yeah. time and time again. And then Absolutely. he ousted my man Phil Sims, who has two rings. One time he didn't make it to the Super Bowl because he was hurt, but he got them rings and things, two rings and things. Yeah, yeah he did his thing. As if Tony Romo is going to come in there and be be able to announce. Jim Nance is going to be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Tony Romo's like, I feel like uh, Cam might fumble here. But like, how do you know that? He goes, well, that's what I would have done. Motherfucker, we're not talking about you. Call a game, man. 
Jim Nance is going to be like, we know what you did. You know Tony Romo was going to make a mistake, but not everybody's doing that shit. They're carting this guy around. Like, like he, he, he was the reason for world peace. He is this week's famous white person with no lips. That's the respect we give you. Just because he, he, had, his, he had a couple of dates with some big-time chicks doesn't mean you big-time, Tony Romo. And somebody said, oh, he should be on your stickman list. I was like, motherfucker, are you kidding? You, first of all, don't tell me who should be on the stick man list, number one. Number two, just because you had a couple of days in the sun with Jessica Simpson and, 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 and some other uh, country singers, that ain't no stick man list. You're supposed to do that. You're the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys, and that's all you pulled off for 14 years. I know he got married young, but you ain't no stick man. You ain't no Coxman. You ain't no Burgess yeah. Meredith. You ain't no Yo. Warren Beatty. Yeah, I don't even have you in the discussion. You're not even no Joe Willie Namath. You know what kind of damage Joe Willie Namath did up and down Broadway and Madison Avenue during the 60s and the early 70s? Joe Willie Namath with the fur coat? That is a stick man. That is a coxman. Talk to me and about Tony Romo being a coxman. Tony, Tony Romo being a stick man. And Joe Namath. Went at Susie Colbert of ESPN. So he was doing stickman shit way up, up in, in to his 70s. What he did in New York. They, we're talking about world-class Coxman work. Yeah. Super Bowl for the New York Jets. The unheralded underdog New York Jets. He had the cleft chin, the nice hair, the laid-back swag, and he was throwing the rock down the field. He wasn't getting no interceptions. He's out yeah. there playing. He's playing with like a, a fucking, uh, like a, a soft ass t shirt as a helmet. <laughs> yeah. Joe he's Willie Namath, that's a coxman. This is a man yeah, who he... racked up numbers on the field and off the field. I don't want to hear no more about Tony fucking Romo. Tony fucking, Tony Baloney. Gee. Tony Romo is equivalent to like Randy Whitman in the NBA. Like, you, you, you're not a star, B. You, you on the team. And you fucking up when we need you the most. So you're not, you're even, not, that you're not nice. even Steve Kerr yeah. as a player. Steve Kerr knocked down shots to get them the rings and things. Yeah. That's why I didn't that's why I didn't call him. Yo, this guy is getting too much props. How many playoff games did this dude win in 14 years? Yo, I don't fact check. One? But there, there weren't a lot. He's more famous for the games he lost and the way he lost them. And it wasn't like he was like one of those dudes on a bad team. And he was doing work. He was the reason yeah. why the Dallas Cowboys didn't get to the next level. And you parading yep, this dude him. around in the Pope Mobile? Get the fuck out of here. Yo, <laughs> word, gee, word. I, I, this really bothered me today. We talked about this the other day, and everybody's seen it. This doctor on the flight from United Airlines to uh, United Airlines Chicago to Louisville, who was dragged off the plane. Yeah. It, it's become like nationals. Listen. We made jokes about it. Obviously, this was, a, this was a bad incident. Okay, obviously, this was handled completely wrong. But, G. Moody, I turned on the TV this morning on every fucking channel. Every channel. This dude and his lawyer and talking about his lawsuit as if, as if this was like a monumental occasion. Like, this was big news. Yo, they asked money to leave. He didn't leave. He got smacked around a little bit. Now you're talking about you lost teeth, you got a busted oh, nose, on. busted sinus system, and all that. Yo, my man, cut the bullshit. And it turns out that this Dr. Dow, that's his name, he fleed Vietnam in 1975 when Saigon fell, and he was on a boat. He fleed Vietnam on a boat, and he said that being dragged off the plane was worse than fleeing Vietnam on a boat. Listen, motherfucker, we know you're going to get a lawsuit, all right? But cut the bullshit, man. How could that, getting your little lip busted on a plane, yeah. obviously was upsetting, obviously was probably scary, but they told you to get up, Dr. Dow. Why didn't you just get the fuck up now? Get your money. Yeah. And I, I don't understand why this has become national fucking news. It's not like uh, uh, like there's some craziness going on where, where people are getting dragged off planes. You know where there's craziness going on? In the streets with people getting shot and their ass kicked by the police 
all the fucking time. Yo, I called for it. I asked for it. I said it didn't exist, G. Moody. Yeah. And and those police officers in Colorado were about it, about it. <laughs> a 22-year-old woman, white woman with red hair, cute, nice, was body slammed. Body mm. slammed in Colorado the other day. That was more scary than what they did to Dr. Dow. No disrespect to Dr. Dow. But they slammed this young girl to the ground, thin, white girl. She's like 95 pounds. They could have busted her face, broken her ribs. It's like a little blurb. Hey, I side with the cops uh, grabbing money off the plane. Um, I, I side with them. They told them you're going to be randomly selected and we select you to be removed. You know, you have to get off the plane and you don't get off then we got to physically take you off. And if your head hits the arm rest and all that, that's incidental. Get off the plane. Yeah, that's incidental and contact, Duke. That, that's it. That, it's not, you were being unruly. You didn't want to leave, so we got to physically remove you. And you don't get to determine how physical it's going to get. Yo, get Duke, the fuck get the off fuck the plane. up off the plane, Duke. Word. We told you get the Word. fuck up off the plane. Yo, Doc. Doc Dow, get the fuck up off the plane, my man. <laughs> fuck you think this yeah. is, money? Yeah, you don't you don't make the rules. We they selected you. Either you get up or we're gonna get your ass up. <laughs> that that's what it is. I side with the cops. Word, I'm sorry you got your lip busted. Here, here's five grand. Take a fucking walk now. This is national yeah. news. Every fucking news channel. Come on, I mean, there's so yeah. much shit going. We're bombing places. There's bombs. We, and, we, and, and to me. While, while this was going on, G, while they this the, the bombs were being set off across the world. Yeah. yeah, man. Yo, money, you got hemmed up. That's <laughs> what it is. And um, get off the plane. When they tell you, yo, we pick you up, we, you, you got to go. You can't negotiate with the motherfuckers. These are, the, these are police. Yo, get Duke, up they and, hemmed you up real go. nice. Okay, yeah. you, 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 yo, you, you lucky it wasn't worse, money. It, was, it wasn't no Rodney King shit. You got a little fucking and, busted lip, man. Go yeah. get some stitches in your shit. Keep it moving, Duke. And the next now, time they now, tell you to get the fuck up, get the fuck up, money. Yeah. And now, now he's going to, now he's going to form some Vietnam, Vietnamese lives matter now. Some bullshit about planes and shit. <laughs> fuck out of here. Yo, the jokes, the Joker's Jinx roller coaster. In Washington, D.C., stopped in mid ride today with 20 people on it. The Joker's yeah. Jinx roller coaster at an amusement park in Washington, D.C. I don't fuck with amusement parks. Are, are, are you with roller coasters yeah. and all that, G? Oh, hell no. I, I, I went on the Thunderbolt in Coney Island in 1979 and I almost fell out of this shit. <laughs> so I've been, I've been a, a, it was like a phobia now. I get, I get scared when I see them fucking roller coasters. Yeah, I don't, I don't mess with that. And, and this is one of the reasons. They had to get the helicopters, the, 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 the rescue workers to get them front. They were at the peak of it. Hundreds of feet in the air, stuck. Can you imagine? Yo, I would have been... Yo, gee, yo, yo. I ain't with it. You, you know I'm, I'm theatrical. It. I literally <laughs> would have been... Yo, I would have been crying. You'd have come yo. up there and been like, what is wrong with this dude? I would have been fucking crying. Yeah. Those I would have, been, I would have felt like fun. I was on death's door. Those rides are not fun. As I'm you not get with older, all that. You know what is yeah. fun, though, G? When What's the up? Miami Heat grind it out and bop it out all the way to the last night of the regular season in the NBA. They had a sliver of hope. They, if Brooklyn one thing could have went one way and one game, they would have made it to the playoffs. But you didn't. And you know who's happy? <laughs> I'm fucking happy. So LeBron this is ain't there no more. <laughs> oh, you guys ain't doing shit. The good old days are over, you fucks. Yeah, like, well, <laughs> hey, hey I, all these people on, on, on social media like, well, asshole, at least we were close. The Knicks, uh, you know, you guys weren't even close. This ain't horseshoes, you fuck you. <laughs> close don't matter in basketball. Close don't matter in the NBA playoffs. Pack your shit up. Get your white silk shirts out, okay? Snort up a little bath salt. Go to the nightclub and dance it off to some EDM. You Miami Heat fucks you. You ain't making it <laughs> to the playoffs. 
Okay, Alonzo Mourning ain't there, D Wade ain't there, and Braun ain't there. The fucking party is over. And as soon as Pat Riley leaves, you guys are gonna go to sh- you're gonna be in Schmitherines. <laughs> right. You still fucking with Miami. LeBron isn't there, man. Listen, LeBron you guys, you there. guys, you guys didn't come to the games when he was there. You you left. The whole the, the Miami Heat fans, I lost respect for the Miami Heat fans when you walked out. And you missed, collectively, the Ray Allen shot versus the Spurs. And I believe it was, what was it, 2013? You missed that, you dumb fucks. And you came running back into the arena dressed in all white silk shirts trying to get in. And they were like, no, you fucking bath salt sniffing fucks. You're not allowed back in the arena. You ain't real fans. Yo, you holding that shit against the fucking, you're, you're a crazy guy, man. You're like De Niro on that baseball shit. You're a fucking crazy motherfucker. Listen, it is what it is. You know what else is going on in sports? This has nothing to do with sports. New York Mets, baseball season has started. You, you, you know you said you're a big time a hockey fan. Obviously, right. we love NBA. Jordan Winter and Miles Davis, the producer extraordinaires, they, they love baseball, okay? Yeah. But Jose Reyes, Jose Reyes, New York yeah. Mets. You hear about what he kind of shit he's in? Yeah, he got a lot of baby mama drama, man. It's shit, man. You got to your loaf. Protect your loaf, B. Yo, he's out here. He got mistresses. He got babies yeah. with mistresses. He's paying. He, he's married. Okay, and he has, a, he has a mistress who he had a baby with who he was parading around on the low for months with, and she's bad. Chris, Christina yeah. Sanchez. You saw the pictures of her? She was... <sighs> yeah, yeah. Yo, I, I, yo you ki- yo, Jose, yo, man, you you only live once, man. Just take care of them kids, man. Do the right thing, man. You you skied it. Mm-hmm. Now you got to deal with it. Yeah, you skied it. Now, 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 now your bank account is going to be depleted because he's paying her 11500 <laughs> a month. <laughs> That's She's great. trying to get forty grand a month for, for this reason and that reason. Yo, that child support is no joke. Okay, yeah. his wife is bad too. Yo, Jose, yeah. hey, Jose Reyes, is, he's no joke. But you're gonna be yeah. swinging that bat till you're 50, my man. You're gonna be paying yeah. child support. The judge don't want to hear nothing. You play for the New York Mets when they go in yeah. there and see Christina Sanchez, who's trying to get that money. The judge is gonna topple over because she's a oh, oh man. You're gonna be he's gonna be funding his whole village back in the Dominican Republic. Them ladies going to them ladies gonna kill him, man. Yo, but you're gonna keep you gotta keep playing. Baseball pays a lot of money. You got to just keep healthy and play till 55. Fuck yeah, it. try. Rock it till the wheels come <laughs> off cuz yo, you're going to be paying, you're going to be paying your mistress and I'm sure he's got some other mistresses and I'm not trying to yeah. dry snitch on him. Yo, but yo, my man freaks off. Okay? So I'm not com- yeah. I'm not condoning cheating, but if you're going to do it, do it like Jose Reyes cuz he got himself a bricklayer <laughs> on the side. She's yo, bad. Yo, yo. Jose Reyes is a Dominican stick man. No doubt. And this is just Yo, the ones oh. we know about. Yo, Jose Reyes of the New York Mets is about it, about it. And and his his mistress, she's about it, about it too. About it, about it. Yo, she she got 11500 a month. She wants it boosted up to 41 Gs a month. Oh. Yeah. They're going to probably Judge find will, a happy medium somewhere. The judge going to give her that because she's bad. If I was the judge and I seen her come in the courtroom, I'd be like, you going to get whatever you want. <laughs> the, the judge is going to try to skeet. Yeah. <laughs> but this tells you got to, I advocate getting snipped if, you, if you're about to go into the league. Get snipped. Don't do it to yourself, man. Don't be out here Sean Kempen wilding out, yeah. man. Yeah. That's, that's what, that should be part of the contract. And this is a message to all the young men out there. Okay, because this could happen too. Yeah. My yeah. man from China, he's from southern China. He was freaking off having that intimacy with his wife. 42-year-old dude. Yo, my man broke his dick, Duke. Uh-oh. How? Just from skeeting. Just from fundamental <laughs> that- freaking off, man. He wasn't doing anything weird, anything unusual. He just, he just was, he was, you know what he was doing? He was sugar dicking probably. He was sugar dicking, yeah, yeah. and, 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 you know, it happens. It's like, yo, ball players, Aggressive. you know, they tear their Achilles. My man from China, yeah. 
Yo, he was sugar dicking, and boom, he broke and his then, dick, and he had to go to the doctor. They call it eggplant deformity. His shit swelled up. He oh. had purple bruising on his loaf, and I wanted to just wish him a, a, a smooth uh, 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 and, and healthy Ooh. and, and you know, speedy recovery, you know, Godspeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah please, man. <laughs> Yo, they said in the paper he, he was aggressive. They and, said and what? He just he was aggressive, and it, it just snapped. Nah, nah. You see, we're reading contracting. They want to do that because they want to try to make it seem like uh, uh, they want to try to, this is how they paint the picture, how the media tries to, to, to pull the wool over your eyes. <laughs> I heard, and I read, and my sources told me that my man was just sugar dicking, just straight oh. sugar dicking, and just something <laughs> went wrong. Yo, you see great athletes, you know, like they're in shape. Boom, they tear their meniscus. You're like, what happened? It could happen. <laughs> this is a message to all the young skeeters out there, the young shooters out there, the wannabe cocksmen, the guy, wannabe stickmen. Mm. Yo, when you unfold the loaf, just know anything can happen. Anything can happen. Word. Yeah. Um, what else is going on, G? Uh, I see. Uh, I see Miss Janet. Miss Janet Jackson is 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 milling about in London now. That she's not with my man from Qatar, that billionaire. So marriage broke up. I see her. She said it was a. Uh, cultural differences and she uh needed her freedom janet jackson of the uh, jackson family yes rhythm nation janet jackson she was married to some billionaire from he, she tried to do the mariah carey i don't know why these pop singers they they, they they do this to themselves and now she had a baby and now she's divorcing and and what was he what was the guy's deal Oh, said some cultural shit, man. You know, you know that he was a uh, Muslim, and you know women can't do shit, man. You you gotta you know you gotta have that hijab on your head when you come out. You know, I I, I think it's probably shit like that. You know, Janet's like Janet's from Gary, Indiana, man. People think she's from the hood, shit, man. <laughs> Yo, that's true. The Jacksons are from Gary, Indiana. Yo. It, you 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 might have a, a, an impression in your head that it's like you know like uh, the Waltons out there in Gary Indiana. Gary Indiana is a notorious shithole, a yeah. notorious tough, hard nosed, bottom of the bottom hood. And the Jacksons are from there. This, this, this ain't the Bradys and shit. Like yeah. they might have tried to act like they were the Bradys, but this wasn't like you know some Motown package shit. They they came from a tough place. And Janet is from. She's basically a hood chick. <laughs> Yo, and and yeah, you you go out there, and you gotta you gotta adhere to their culture, and you know they ain't letting you drive, they ain't letting you. You can't be outside with your arms out. You can't go to the pool. Yo, this woman's from America, man. I, of course that shit was gonna. She's gonna get tired of that shit. And, and they, he had yeah. her out there in like the the, the high end Gucci hijabs. You look at the picture. She was hijabed up, Janet Jackson. Like she didn't have the full like you know like you know the full thing over her face, but she was she was rocking it. We're talking about Janet Jackson, Ry Rhythm Nation, the girl who sang Control. Got yeah. my own life. I'm gonna make my <laughs> own motherfucking decisions. That that and chick. She was dancing on and the chair with the jeans and all that. Yo, you Yeah. Yo, you gotta dust yourself off and come back, Janet, because you 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 need to come back on that Miss Jackson if you're nasty shit. You get <laughs> get your get your mind right, Janet. Hold your head. Yeah. You 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 bugging. Yeah. But but no, no. She she came up, she got five hundred mil from a prenup. So I'd fuck that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit. Yo, five <laughs> five hundred million. Damn. Yo. The hijab, she said, I know she probably would, you know, Janet Jackson is a black woman. So this motherfucker said you can't be outside with, without your hijab. I know Janet probably was like, nigga, I ain't wearing that. I just got my hair did, man. Uh -huh. It's you know what I'm saying? It's it's hot as fish grease out this bitch. You know, the black shit came out. That's the cultural differences, I'm saying. <laughs> right. That's 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 what the you, you read in between the lines. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the people have spoken. We are a five-star podcast. 
We've even got soft ass t-shirts to prove it. Anytime you hear something on the I Am Rappaport podcast that is five star worthy, go to iTunes and give us five star reviews. You could do it as many times as you want. Leave us a review. We see everything. Ask a question. ILO us. Whatever you want. Hit up iTunes. Give us a review. The good, the bad, the indifferent, whatever you want. We want to take over iTunes. They still don't show us the love we deserve. Yo, all soft ass I Am Rappaport stereo podcast t-shirts are available at districtlines.com forward slash I Am Rappaport. We got the five star stereo podcast tee, the I Am Rappaport stereo podcast zip up and pullover hoodies. The full Iverson t-shirt, the Stickman t-shirt collection, the I Don't Fact Check, the hard body karate t-shirt for men and women. Go to districtlines.com forward slash I am Rappaport. Yo, G, you're in New York every day. I'm in LA a lot. What's going on on the trains, man? They they had a lady, a lady got her head caught in the train the other day and nobody did anything. Man, you 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 know you know where we at, you know what city this is. That could be some some hustle shit. You know what I'm saying? Like that's why nobody. Uh, that's how New York people are. You're not supposed to, cause everybody's a suspect. Everybody's on the take. So that's why they didn't do nothing. You don't know what that is. <laughs> and then after this, a woman attacked uh, an, an MTA worker on the L train, which is the train that I always used to take out to Brooklyn. Yeah. To see G. Moody out in Brownsville at 2.45 a.m., uh, the MTA worker on the train was attacked for being a snitch by a man because they was pissing on the train in between cars. First of all, Duke, yo, you dumbass, you're pissing on the train in between cars. You know piss is flying all over you. <laughs> right? Yep. I've yep. done that when I was a kid. It's stupid. You, it, the piss just flies back on you. No matter how you angle your loaf. And then the MTA worker tells the cops and then they beat him up. Come on, this ain't the 80s, man. New York. Yeah. We're better than that. Yeah. All right, G, that's it, man. That's it. We're done. Shutting it down. That's it? That's it. It's the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. Again, we're going to be on tour May 9th, San Francisco at the Chapel. May 11th in Seattle. May 13th. In Vancouver, British Columbia. Tickets are available at www.iamrappaporttour.com. He is G. Moody. The last name runs with duty. I am Michael Rappaport, yeah. a.k.a. the Gringo Mandingo. And this is the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast, the only non-fact-checking podcast in the world. We're done. Once upon a time, there was a new crossover that refused to play by the rules. It flipped the script and made all the others look like fools. Featuring styling that's sexier by far and handles like a rock star. Introducing the first ever Toyota CHR. Enjoy agile handling in the body of a seductive crossover that comes with standard 18-inch alloy wheels. The first ever Toyota CHR. The perfect ride to spin your own tail. Toyota. Let's go places.